we're off to see Francis Bacon's uh, collection of, of what, what do they call them? Paintings, <laughs> I do believe. That's, that's right, that's the technical term. So we're going to the Royal Academy because we're on an art binge and uh, that's what you do when you come to London nowadays, you go on an arts binge. You turned the wrong way coming up. Oh, I did, did I? Yeah. Oh, right. I'm not to say so. Uh, went the wrong way, apparently. I'm just following orders now. And whose orders am I following? You're following the orders of your beautiful wife. Ah, <laughs> oh, right. So you're, you're going to Burlington House now, are you? I believe so. Okay, where are you? What are you doing? Oh, where am I? I'm in Piccadilly Circus and I'm about to go down that road over there, which is Piccadilly. Right. Because on the right side of that road down there is the Royal Academy. Right, and, and <clears throat> what is this is this statue all about? Yes. Yeah. It's the Cock of Love. Oh, oh right. <laughs> and wasn't there a roundabout here? <clears throat> Didn't, didn't people used to go round and round and round in circles? Uh, yeah, wasn't it a, a thing to do in the 1930s and 40s if you had a car? I, I wasn't here in the 1930s and 40s, so I, I can't comment on that one. But, you know, that's, this was the centre of, of uh, all sorts of uh, social activities. It's got so just up the, up the road and Regent Street and Oxford Street, all sorts of things going on. Just down there, the seat of power. <laughs> yes, Piccadilly Circus used to be a, a busy roundabout, which Hooray Henrys would uh, circle around in their brand new automobiles. <laughs> and another magnificent bookshop, one of the highlights. <laughs> yes, that's right. They even sell books by Lawrence Gray. Yes, that's right. You go to the Waterstones website and you can find Adam's franchise and uh, Cop Show Heaven. Can you really? Yes, you can. Oh, I should go there and buy them. Then, yes, you go, I? you go there and buy them. For God's sake, somebody buy these books. <laughs> The names of your That's right, then, Cop Show Heaven and Adam's Franchise. You also get odds and sods, I, I do believe. Uh, one of these days I'll, I'll put out another collection. <laughs> when I can be bothered. If you can both bother to buy those, I might even write another one. Right, this is a Hawkesbaw Church. Of course, if you've read the, uh, the novel Hawkesbaw, you know that Hawksmoor was a rather weird character, sort of Satanist. A uh, what did he do? Was it uh, mur murder virginal <laughs> women and? Yeah, well, since oh, and there's a, a lot of churches. <laughs> there's a lot of churches done by him, and and he was uh, a bit of a dodgy character, apparently. Uh, if I'm confused, I might be confusing it with the book Perfume, where they they were dipping, dipping virgins in uh, in oil to uh, get their perfume well, that or something. Was it before, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but one I of those books. We had that on our shelves. That's right. Anyway, this novel about Hawksmoor and his nefarious yeah, ways. Those statues in the. Uh... Oh yeah. It's as if they've cleaned up all the buildings. Yes, they've been... Look, this is the Royal Institute of Painters in Watercolours. Oh, right. They've cleaned this building up, and that's for the first time in uh, uh, 69 years <laughs> <laughs> that we've noticed that it's the Institute of Painters in Watercolour. Royal Institute. Royal Institute, Institute. yeah. And, and I guess all those statues up there are of people who are painted in watercolour. Gertin, Cousins and Sandby. 
Right, well... Sadly, they're all men. And, and I, I didn't actually know any of them painted in watercolour. I assumed they were all uh, oil paints and other such things. Well... We've learned something new and seen something we new. Always learn something <laughs> new every day. Yeah, that's because we keep forgetting the old stuff. Uh, <laughs> so every day we learn something new. Every day is a new day. Francis Bacon was the son of an Irish horse breeder. His father had a somewhat dismal opinion of uh, Francis's homosexuality and kicked him out of the house at 16. Uh, Bacon roamed about Germany and France for a while on a, uh, uh, an allowance from his father and then settled in London working as an interior decorator until he saw the works of Picasso and thought he would give painting a go. You can see in his works the influence of paintings such as Guernica. And uh, it was at the end of the war that Bacon's painting attracted attention. The images that were coming out of the concentration camps at that time probably made his paintings seem very of the moment. As the 50s progressed, we find him as a founder member of the Colony Room Club in 41 Dean Street. There, he hung out with the likes of George Melly, Geoffrey Bernard, Lucian Freud, among others. And uh, the owner, Muriel Belcher, features in a number of his portraits. And once you see photos of her, you can actually recognize her as the basis of the distorted images. Francis also gravitated towards Tangiers and other such places where the beat poets hung out, uh, becoming pals with the likes of William Burroughs and of course a fan of Samuel Beckett, though I don't think they ever met. Uh, Francis uh, was known for being affable, if often drunk, but none of his good humour crept into his paintings. These remained resolutely bleak. He once said that the hardest thing for an artist was to find a subject, and so one could say that having found his subject, he stuck to it. He said he wanted to paint the perfect picture, but if he did, he would not have to paint anymore. And quite frankly, he liked painting. And in fact, he, he, he did say that uh, his paintings were, uh, were often an accident, and, but you, then you chose to keep this accident rather than another. He summed himself up as uh, champagne for my real friends, pain for my sham friends. And that seems to be something that sums up uh, his life 
and also probably uh, a lot of the uh, 50s and 60s bohemia of the uh, of, uh, around Soho and, and the likes. It's uh, uh, the uh, colony room unfortunately no longer exists but 41 Dean Street does. I don't know whether there's a bar there now but um, uh, I shall have to find out one day. Okay, so we've been to see Francis Bacon's uh, put out on on the walls in in re real life, and they're much bigger than you imagine. Uh, you uh, normally see these things in books and with glossy pages, but uh, when you see them in reality, they're not glossy, are they? They're not glossy, <clears throat> and they're rather large, and there's large amounts of space around the image within the frame which is not something very often they crop when they put them in the books don't mm. they mm. which is also interesting see you never quite see the real thing until you see the real thing uh, and you also see that under rather rather good lighting which um, is not where they were painted. They were painted in rather dismal places, most of them. But also, when you see the real thing, you see the texture. Yes, and the texture. Yeah, so yes, that's right. You, you see the uh, the blobs and the uh, the old fingerprints and brushes and uh, the the errors and mistakes, if that's what they are. They're all part of parcel of the same thing. <coughs> but um, what I got uh, from looking at these paintings was. Um, a desire to eat. A, desire. a bag of bacon crisps. Oh, that's right, yes. I, I got a bag of bacon crisps, bacon flavoured crisps, that's what I had. Um, but also, uh, I just thought um, you could just look at these things and walk away. Uh, whereas when you look at some of the, uh, the big, you know, the um, Van Goghs and the uh, Gauguins and all that, you kind of look and you, you can read the paintings more. It, was, it, was so, it, it seemed to be an obvious thing. You didn't need to unpack much. They all well, seemed these to, were easier just... to read once you learnt the story from the first one to well, the last one. Yeah, that's, that's basically it. Uh, it. There was that idea that um, you were in fact looking through a, uh, a book on open heart surgery or something like that, uh, <laughs> or a collection of um, artificial wounds that um, would be used in training purposes for uh, um, Vets. For vets or medi <laughs> medics during the war of some sort, there there is a sense of uh, the Second World War and the 1950s and the uh, the old Soho uh, Bohemian lifestyle that, that just sort of creeps into there no matter what. It's very evocative of that. Um, but yes, they're they're all. Uh, I think the word weird is a good word to use. It's very unacademic and unartistic to use the word weird. You're not supposed to use words like weird when you look at modern art, are you? You're supposed to use, I don't know, exquisite and no, other such striking. words. Striking. Striking. Yeah, striking. Uh, I've always been interested. I've always found it interesting. Though I've always found the thing about Francis Bacon uh, that's most interesting was the uh, um, the fact that he used to hang out in Soho in some of the pubs that I used to go to uh, back in the 70s and uh, it's Geoffrey Barnard and all that that group of uh, Soho um, uh, columnists and what have you um, and in fact I can't help feeling that Boris Johnson somewhere in one of Francis Bacon's <laughs> paintings has been prematurely um, portraited if that's the if there is such a word um, you, you, you do get the sense that Boris Johnson is a product of that Soho bohemian lifestyle um, he's the great great grandson of one of the eight light figures uh, that appears in uh, <laughs> in a Francis Bacon uh, painting uh, and the behavior that's been going on in the um, uh, it, it, number 10 Downing Street does seem to me straight out of the Soho of the 1950s. It really does uh, seem to be a, a throwback to, to that era. You know, imagine those guys taking over a country. Well, you no longer have to imagine it. Uh, so what else? Does, let's, let's get my other correspondent's uh, opinion here. Let's just flip this around and... <laughs> 
Give me your impressions. My impressions? <laughs> I have learned today that to appreciate the grand works of the masters, you have to see the early works of the masters. Oh, and yeah. then it, they kind of make a lot more sense then. Yes, well, I've, I've often thought the, uh, the early works are often far better than the, uh, the, the, the sort of masterpieces that are sort of worked over and over and over. I, I, I tend to feel that the, the, the stuff done early, early on, the more uh, spontaneous material is, uh, I think is that's also it far makes, more interesting. They're easier to understand. The masterpieces have been worked on and worked on and, and their meaning is, is a little more difficult for us lay people to understand. Do they have to have a meaning? Yes, I think they do. Yeah. Otherwise, they're just blobs of paint. I don't know. Blobs of paint. Yeah, quite those, interesting. Those, we found blobs of paint. We, 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 we can, we we can we, look we, at blobs of paint and find them quite interesting. We have. There's a portrait of a lady uh, several times in, in the exhibition. Um, I'm just wondering what she felt like when she saw that that's how she was perceived by her good friend. Yeah, yes. I, I, I couldn't see that Obviously too many people would she, commission she him for that. carried on knowing him because she appears in quite a few of those yeah. paintings. Well, she well, wouldn't be recognisable, I guess. No, that's she's not. <laughs> <laughs> if she was, then she was in a poor state, wasn't she? She was obviously too much, spoke too much. <laughs> but I did like this idea of he got movement in his paintings by having a, a split image. Oh, right, yes, yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to try that with my photography. Yes, well, the, uh, the thing is, um, would he have been making videos now? If he'd have, no. had, the, uh, if he'd have had the equipment? No. The stuff, no. No. Because he, he pornographic and they oh, wouldn't be allowed. Oh, no, that would have been no. Would have Not, been, no. Would have been out there. No, no, he would have. Because it mentioned something in there about him yeah. preparing some work for for film. Yeah. But then stuck to yeah. putting his ideas into painting and stuff. Anyway. Yeah. But it's ex expensive. We're just rambling on here. I'm yeah, sure yeah, no, no, we're yeah. <laughs> yeah, just going through this one. Yeah. So don't forget, like, subscribe, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, <laughs>